Hello! Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free 30-day trial plus a free audiobook download when you visit www.audibletrial.com slash Actors Anonymous Podcast. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Check it out, www.audibletrial.com slash Actors Anonymous Podcast. Hello, hello, welcome to Actors Anonymous Podcast. I'm your host, Wiesam Kish. And the lovely voice you heard in the intro was not our new theme song. It wasn't me. It wasn't Jordan. It was Cheryl. It was definitely me. It was beautiful. What's up? That was nice. (laughs) Oh, guys. Never done this before, clearly. You could have fooled me. Oh, my goodness. Our, Our guest today who I've, I, I've had the pleasure of working with, Mr. Joe Flanders, from the very popular web series, Average Joe, with millions of viewers and over like like tens and thousands of subscribers. It's over 100,000, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it's 115 or something. Wow. That's, 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 pretty, that's pretty impressive, I think. Well, thank you. Uh, especially, like, uh, the web series is hilarious, and uh, season three comes out. May 5th. May 5th. Yeah, well, we got nine episodes. This is the third and final season. Uh, so we have a new episode coming out every Thursday starting May 5th. And I had the honor Amazing. of playing a character in one of these episodes. <sighs> Absolutely. Yep. Do you know which episode that's one? It's like... Uh, two, maybe. Oh, it's that <laughs> soon? Oh, my goodness. Uh, maybe. Yeah, I think it's two. Two, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely two. Episode two. It was... And I'm one of the reasons I brought you on here was it was one of the funnest projects I've ever shot in my life. Oh man, I'm glad to hear that. It was so ridiculous in a good way. Uh, the character I got to play was awesome. And what I appreciated was all the hard work that uh, you, uh, Patrick, and there was another gentleman. Lee. There. Lee. Yeah, Lee Page. Patrick oh my gosh. Fogarty. You guys kicked butt on there. And you, have you guys been together since the first season? Yeah, yeah. I, I went to high school with Lee. I met him freshman year of high school back mm-hmm. in Ohio. And uh, and then I met Patrick uh, probably four four and a half years ago and yeah, the other three of us have been on since day one uh, which was yeah about four years ago uh, that we started and it's more or less been a three-person crew uh, we've had i mean we've had other people generously help out but the core group of, of yeah. Pat, lee and i it's yeah i definitely could not have done it without the two of them it's so, so much work producing mm-hmm. writing and directing acting and then <laughs> editing and then uploading and then the social media aspect of <laughs> yes. your own content i mean Whew, I got tired yeah. saying it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I get tired doing it. <laughs> like, and how is like it, with online too, when you're doing that and you want to get a lot of viewership and drag stuff towards that. We were talking about this earlier before the show, uh, like all the stuff that goes into meticulously designing, you know, simple thumbnails for mm-hmm. images, titles, like words that are going to pop to people. It's It's insane how much work goes into the marketing aspect of that too. Oh, yeah. definitely. And if we had the means, we'd have somebody do that because I think that's probably my weakest uh, skill. I just don't. <laughs> By the time, you know, I've, yeah, like we said, written it and shot it and edited it and done everything. I just, you know, I don't, <laughs> I don't have the means to, uh, to research all the best ways to do that. So who knows? Maybe we'd have even more, more viewership <laughs> if I knew the exact buzzwords. But yeah, you know, I've always sort of just, uh, let that, you know, hopefully let the, the word of mouth catch on. And thankfully it has. So you've been doing it for three years, right? Uh, yeah, this is our third season. We've done it over the course of, uh, I mean, we started shooting in 2012. So uh, it's, yeah, it's oh, been wow. about four years. How uh, did it all start? Like, how did you guys come together and come up with this concept? Um, well, I uh, I came out to LA in 2010 after four years of film school and making videos and stuff in high school. And, you know, I worked on some PA, you know, a bunch of shitty PA gigs and all that stuff that you kind of do when you when you move out here. And before I knew it, like two and a half years had gone by and I hadn't filmed anything, you know, mm. and that's something that I'd always been doing uh, beyond just the school projects. I mean, I made two features while I was in college uh, over the summer. Wow. Um, not, neither of which are particularly good because I was 20 <laughs> and I had nothing to say, but I didn't know that at the time. But the experience was incredibly rewarding. And so I just missed being on set and creating things. And so, you know, I sort of, I, I told enough stories of, uh, of my sex- failed sexual escapades, uh, mm. as they were. And, you know, I realized I was getting a lot of laughs and 
Um, and I just thought, well, hell, I've got enough of these stories. Why don't we, we don't have to put them on much steroids. They're already kind of ridiculous, but you know, if we juice them up a little bit, I think we could have something really interesting. And, uh, so the whole first season, you know, it's, uh, it was really just about a guy trying, you know, he gets dumped in the pilot and then he's trying to, uh, can we curse on here? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, fuck as yeah. I phrased it, he gets dumped in the pilot and then he spends the whole season trying to fuck the pain away um, <laughs> Fair. and failing miserable. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, that was kind of the, the, it was just a desire to do something to create something. We didn't know, you know, I just figured six episodes. I'd been watching like the, a lot of British comedy and stuff. So just a six episode quick run. Um, and, uh, halfway through shooting, you know, I didn't, we didn't write scripts. I just had outlines and, you know, it was just something to do. Oh, wow. There was no grand plan at that time. And halfway through, uh, I dropped the hard drive. And so we lost a bunch of footage. Whoa. Wow. And so then it was like, well, you know, we're in too deep to just walk away from this. It better be good. And so then I really forced myself to go and write the scripts. And, uh, and then, you know, once it, kind of took off a little bit then it was like oh this is a thing let's you know keep doing this so <laughs> i'm i'm sorry i'm not laughing i'm not laughing at you dropping the hard drive which is a horrible it's, horrible yeah, it thing awful. i literally every time somebody says i dropped a hard drive there's a story that happened to jordan oh yeah and it's i'm gonna have to mention is that okay can no, i talk about, please let's talk about it okay it's awful this is probably like you know when like a car accident happens in front of you yeah. and there's nothing you can do so you just watch yeah. <laughs> so yep. this is basically what <laughs> or help we say <laughs> oh i'm sorry let me just reformat your hard no, drive you said, into you starbucks said a car accident <laughs> it's just like you just sit there and watch oh like oh okay that's fair <laughs> helping is an option though if you take it yeah yep. fair oh my God. fair okay so anyway long story short me and jordan are si um i'm meeting jordan at a coffee shop starbucks and I'm an idiot for not backing everything up oh, and bringing too. a hard drive in public. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But he moved like he had all the wires connected to his laptop, and like he moved, and I just see everything in slow motion. The hard drive is a stand-up, which I have a problem with, like the the really thin ones that stand really tall. Let's I'm talk like, about I it. think that should not be a thing. They do that on purpose. Mm -hmm. They want you to drop that. <laughs> It's all conspiracy. It literally, not only just, I think a wire got stuck, it tips over on its side, <laughs> so already it falls down. <laughs> then it slips and falls off of the table oh. onto the chair, oh. and then continues to proceed to fall onto oh. the floor. And I'm like, no, no, no! <laughs> <laughs> I, like, oh, lost my, and just sitting there, like a bystander, like just standing, like <laughs> like watching. We see, I'm just like, I'm so sorry. I'm so Dude, sorry. I'm so like, sorry. Like, <laughs> lost everything. Two terabytes. Oh, yeah. God. My like, three different projects. Yeah. Oh. So, I feel your the pain. pain. The pain is real, but yeah. <laughs> I'm glad that through this, like, horror. I'm glad you didn't quit. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's, it would have been so easily just to go, you know what? Fuck it. Yeah. I, I, three episodes in, I don't have an end goal. I'm not going to continue doing this. Exactly. Yeah. So, what. Just to get a little deeper, what made you want to keep going? Because you were just too deep into it? Well, I just was having too much fun doing it. I mean, I was just having a blast, you know? Again, oh. it had been so long since I'd been make, you know, since I'd filmed anything and, and it was just a new energy and it was the mm. first thing I'd filmed out here. And so you kind of get that, like, you know, uh, I'm in it. I'm in LA. I'm doing it. This is what I've been wanting to do since I was 15. Uh, and I'm here and I'm doing it. And I know we're getting funny stuff. And if I actually apply myself, it could be really funny. Yeah. You know, myself as well as, as Lee and Patrick and, and, uh, the actors we had on. Uh, so I think it was just like, you know, half-assing it was a good tease for like, okay, now if we really commit to this, I think we'll have something yeah. kind of unique. And so that's, I think, and also it was just like, well, what else am I going to, I'm not happy just PAing, you know, like what else am I going to do? Uh, and I had had like sort of a dream job scenario, um, before we started filming, I, I ended up being the writer's assistant on Eastbound and Down, uh, which is HBO series mm -hmm. that... And those, because those guys went to my college, uh, North Carolina School of the Arts. And so I, oh, wow. I kind of knew them through that. And, you know, I, I had uh, started off as an intern there, um, just at their production company, and then was promoted and then fired uh, like six weeks into it what? because I just, I didn't have the work ethic. I didn't, I didn't appreciate how lucky I was to have that responsibility and to have that job because I've just been able to waltz through life really starting in, in, I mean, I remember in fifth grade, my mom had to have a talk with the teacher and say, Joe does not deserve an A minus. He deserves a C. Just, oh, but he's such a fun kid. And, you know, and so I've just been able to waltz through life 
And then real life hit me in the, and hit me in the face, you know, and it was, I never actively was trying to be lazy, but I just didn't have the work ethic and appreciation. And, uh, and they would tell, you know, it wasn't like it was totally out of the blue in yeah. hindsight, you know, they would, they would tell me like one specific thing, like, Hey, you know, make sure you're the first one in here. And I would correct that. But then there'd be another thing, you know, like it wasn't, so they gave me an opportunity and I just squandered it and didn't realize it. And so, you know, after that point, I went home and kind of flicked my wounds and, oh, maybe I'll just like get a job at the grocery store here in Ohio and I can save up and make my own projects. And thankfully, I did not do that. Mm -hmm. And so when I came back out here, I think there was a sense that like I got to if I want this, I'm going to have to bust my ass to make it happen. And so I think that was another reason that I kept doing it, uh, kept creating the show is because I, you know, I saw what happens if you don't. If you don't put all of your heart into something, yeah. you get fired. <laughs> what, can you, just for our listeners, like, can you talk a bit about being a writer's assistant on a show like Eastbound and Down? Yeah, I mean, it was an incredible, uh, I really had a blast doing it. Um, it was uh, my first time in a writer's room, obviously. And so it was the third season of their show. Uh, and at the time, they that was supposed to be the last season. I don't know. I mean, Eastbound and Down is, is a show about a steroid crazed uh, pitcher who had a bunch of success and then um, uh, falls apart and ends up teaching Jim in his hometown. Uh, he's a temporary PE teacher. So anyway, the third season was supposed to be the final season. And so um, for me, it was a lot of just, they would sit in the writer's room and I was just the scribe and I would just have to make sense of all these nonsensical notes and things and all these different ideas. And, and there was a lot of note cards involved and, you know, they, they knew how many episodes they had. And, um, uh, so it'd start with just very broad, like what's this episode about? And then you get more and more specific. And, you know, as I got a little more comfortable, you know, I threw out a couple of ideas that ended up on note cards. And so that made me feel good. That's awesome. Um, and so, you know, it was equal parts kind of scribe, but then also kind of, you know, uh, setting out the different menus each day for what lunch is going to be and then going out to get lunch. And um, so it was it was kind of a combination of uh, and then I was also answering phones when they didn't need me because uh, I was still I was kind of an intern slash writer's mm. assistant. Um, but just, you know, seeing how they work and it's even in a show as absurd as that, um, it was all about the characters and would they do this and you know, the stuff that they were most excited about is, is showing this character in a vulnerable light and seeing him at his lowest and seeing the humanity in this complete asshole of a character and uh, really letting that, you know, it was never, they, they were not sitcom-y about, um, you know, what's the situation we're going to find him in? It was just like, all right, well, if this is what he's doing, then what would be the natural step? And it was really a character-driven uh, show as opposed to you know the sort of absurd uh, plot based stuff. So learn. I really soaked all that stuff in, and definitely you know have tried to. I mean, I think they've been a huge influence on what we've done with Average Joe too, um, on some degree. So it was a great to be twenty two and have lived in. I was I had only been out here for four months and I got this job, and so to be there very and soak lucky. that in was an incredible opportunity. So it's very interesting that. Before all this, you said, you know, like you're saying, you're, you're a lazy guy and you kind of just waltz through everything. Because whenever I worked with you on Average Joe, I, I never got that impression. And obviously, you're, you were three years, three or four years into it. And it was just like, this guy couldn't be lazy. There's no way. And it didn't even occur to me, like, maybe you were lazy just mm -hmm. because of all the work I knew that it took to, you know, do it. And I like that turning point for you that it's like, well, what else am I going to do? I really love what I do. And also the fact that, can I say like just in a description of, for the people who haven't seen the web series, it's a little absurd, right? Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, the easiest way to, to, to describe it is I just play a bigger idiot version of myself navigating the dating world. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then, uh, Joe, I always sound like a, like I'm uh, Ricky Henderson talking in the third person here, <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, Basically, I think all of us face decisions numerous times every day, and generally, there's a clear right choice and a clear wrong choice, and you might flirt with the wrong choice for like a split second and be like, oh, no, that's stupid. I would never do that. Joe does that. <laughs> he does the stupid choice, and he's always able to rationalize it somehow, so you can kind of be like, well, I kind of get it, but that was a terrible call. And so it's really just about his sexual misadventures, uh, really the first season. The first season was about a guy just trying to fuck the pain away. Season two was like, oh, I, this isn't working. I want to be in a relationship. And based on personal experiences, you know, if you really want to be in a relationship, you can find somebody, mm -hmm. but it's probably not going to work if you're forcing the issue. Mm -hmm. And so that was sort of the theme of season two. And then now season three, uh, it's really about, 
you know, uh, uh, if you're not comfortable with who you are, it's going to be really hard to have a meaningful relationship. True. And so it's about kind of, and these are all things that I've learned along the way. So they're all, you know, every season has been autobiographical. It's not, you know, these themes are not hit on the head super hard, like <laughs> the end of a, you know, full house when the sappy music comes on. And then <laughs> what did you learn today? Uh, but these are the, you know, it's important for me writing this stuff to know like the sort of like, Okay, this is what we're going for. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of you know the evolution of the show. Was there ever an episode or whenever you were writing where you're like, oh, this might be a little un- uncomfortable to share? Because mm. um, it is dealing, you know, saying you know, with sexual things, with your personal, real life stories. Yeah. And or are you just totally comfortable sharing all that? I'm pretty comfortable, and it's also you know it's. Even though I'm playing a character named Joe, I'm st- it's still hiding behind somebody who I like to believe is a bigger idiot version of myself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lee and Patrick uh, constantly remind me there is no difference between the two of us. Uh, <laughs> but I liked I, I think for my own sanity, I have to pretend at least that there uh, he I would never do the things that he does, even though a lot of this is based on my own experience. Yeah. So you know who's the <laughs> um, so I think being able to hide behind that persona of me, you know, I'm, I'm, there's not much that I'm. I'm scared to to put out there. I mean, yeah. Um, you know, there was in hindsight, there have been things that I cringe at, like just horrific. I mean, you know, uh, we peaked. There's very little of me having sex uh, in seasons two and definitely three because we did enough of that in season one. Uh, I mean, there was a scene and this, you know, where and this was based on a real experience, but. Um, you know, I mean, then the scene just drags on for like five minutes. Uh, I think it's like episode five of season one. And it's just <laughs> this sex scene that just does not end. And it's so uncomfortable and awkward. <laughs> and that's what we were going for at the time. But it was just, I mean, you know, uh, starting having sex, she shrieks in pain. Uh, and then, <laughs> oh my God. And then, and then, uh, you know, I'm like, okay, not sure what that's about. Well, let's not stop the party here. What? So then, like, <laughs> she, you know. She shrieks in pain. <laughs> let's not stop the party. <laughs> I'm having a good time. Well, I was just, you know, there was not a lot of sex being, I was like 19 when this actually happened. There was not a lot of sex going on in my life at the time. So I was like, by God, we're here. Let's try and make the most of it. And so, you know, I. Uh, let's try and make the most of it. <laughs> and so. <laughs> Like a you know. bad family vacation. Oh yeah. Gosh. So then oh. I, you know, I went down on her. Whoa. And, uh, no, okay. <laughs> and then, <laughs> Cheryl, I like how you Cheryl. braced the table. <laughs> I, just, I just feel like this interview is becoming. <laughs> if this is too much, I'm sorry. It's going. Yeah, like, if this is too much, we can just cut. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess we're live, so hey oh. Uh, uh, we're in it. Yeah, Let's we're in keep it. Going. Okay. <laughs> well, you asked if this is. You'll understand why I'm cringing the fact that we filmed all of this. I don't want to give too um, much more away. I want people. To go watch <laughs> okay. the episode. Well, anyway, yeah, uh, and then that didn't work out uh, wow. very well, and so anyway, this scene goes on for like <laughs> at least five minutes, and it's drawn out, and it's incredibly like I can't watch it now. I cringe watching it now, and uh, and that episode I think was also flagged shockingly on YouTube for really? a while too. Oh my god, uh, we uh, we didn't make any porn. It's all happening under the sheets, obviously, but it's <laughs> it's really awkward to watch. <laughs> And I made the mistake of showing the whole first season to my grandmother, oh. uh, and God bless her, she watched the whole thing. And, but I just, and I knew halfway through, I was like, I can't turn around because I was like sitting on the floor, watching <laughs> the, the TV, you know, like a child looking up at the, gazing up at the TV. <laughs> you watched and, it with your grandma? Yeah, yeah, uh, the whole first season. Okay. And she was on the couch. But to, but to be fair, like, is your grandma with it? Like, is she completely aware of what she's watching? Or um, oh, no, she's her? totally with it. Right. Yeah, she's a smart... I mean, she, yeah, <laughs> at the, you know, she was like 85 and, and, you know, and she, you know, it was... She was polite, but I was like, I can't turn around. I, we cannot turn around because that's this like, is so awkward. That's like a whole other scene for your Yeah, show. exactly. It's exactly. like watching it with your So grandmother. that's one of those moments where is there a difference between me and the character I play? Maybe not. But <laughs> yeah. anyway, so that... Since then, we've really tried to take the the sex out of it just because we we did it you know we did it yeah. the whole first season and i think it's far more interesting to talk about the anticipation of it yeah or the fallout of the you know afterwards you know and so i think that that i've made a you know after seeing that i was like i don't need to share you know hey. the sexual moments <laughs> anymore <go>. so <laughs> yeah that was a long-winded answer to your question so, but so this is going to be the last season for Average Joe. Yes. And 
do you have anything planned for afterwards or are you in the works of shooting something else right now we're we're figuring that out there's a, there's several different options we definitely want to keep something going um yeah I, it's um you know there's uh there's a possibility that the show will live on in a different way mm -hmm. um that is a lot of up in the air and thankfully i've been out here long enough to know that you know it probably won't happen. <laughs> uh, I'm excited, and I hope it does. Right, but you know, I think you got to have that attitude. It's it's a fine line between negative and realistic, mm. I think, and just yeah. assuming like you know, there's a lot of things that are out of my control to make that happen. So I'm going to keep doing what I do. Um, so yeah, we're trying to figure out what the right. next project is. Um, you know, I I I, I do have a uh, a porn character alter ego named Dusty Diamond. Who basically just sounds like Will Ferrell's Robert Goulet uh, from Saturday Night Live okay. that we filmed in college, and there's actually on my YouTube page. It's called Eight and a Half Inches, and gotcha. Uh, <laughs> um, it's like a porn mockumentary we did, um, and so that's a character we'd like to to try and explore. We've also talked about doing a prequel series with one of the characters from season three, yeah, uh, kind of a the jerk meets Better Call Saul uh, or something. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're we're kind of floating around a lot of different ideas. I think um, you know the the struggle that I've had is just is whether or not to consider myself a YouTuber um, mm. because, you know, there have been, you know, a year has gone by with no new content on my page. And that's because, you know, in between seasons two and three, I wrote and produced and starred in a movie that was shot in Brooklyn. And, so, you know, I'm doing these other projects and I've worked with enough YouTubers and, you know, I used to sort of question their talent. And maybe I still do to some degree, but I can't question their tenacity and how hard it is to be posting five times a day on Snapchat and to, Oof. you know, I mean, it, 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 it takes so much work. And so I think I've been reluctant to consider myself that because I'm more yeah. of a filmmaker, you know, and this just happened to be something that caught on and I love doing it. Here's a question. Um, with, with the amount of, I mean, like you just said, like you don't really consistently do this throughout the entire year, but you have such a strong following for your yeah. channel. Like where, like it's just for people who are trying to do content for online and stuff like that. How did that happen for you? Um, I think it was a combination of a few things. I mean, the first, you know, I, I, I'm not delusional. Uh, thankfully, you know, I was very lucky to have a cousin who is a rock star. A legitimate rock star, uh, Andy Beersack, um, and he's the lead singer of a band called Black Veil Brides. They're sort of a hard rock band. And um, while, you know, the powers that be in mainstream radio pretend that rock doesn't exist, there is still a very strong contingent of, uh, of fans of that, of rock music, you know, yeah. with actual instruments and things. You don't hear that in m many pop songs right now. <laughs> but inevitably, you know, it'll ebb and flow. And um, But anyway, so he has a huge following. And when we first started the series... He, they'd put out one album and, you know, it, it, that one was almost more of a metal album, uh, screamo type stuff. And, uh, and I just wanted to make something with him because we grew up together. He's from Cincinnati. We used to put on silly plays in our grandma's basement. And, um, I just wanted to work with him. And I thought, oh, well, you know, he's got like a, you know, a marginal following. And, but I didn't think that, you know, metal heads and stuff would, in my head, would follow, would translate into watching me bumbling around trying to have sex with people. Um, <laughs> But they did, and as he's gotten bigger, he's been a great way to sort of um, introduce people to the show. And then uh, comments I see all the time are that, you know, came for Andy, stayed for the show. Um, so I think... Wow, that's great. Yeah. So that was a blessing. You know, I always... People have kind of implied, like, you're kind of a lucky bastard, aren't you? And I'm like, well, I had a cancer scare when I was 12, and I have a cousin who's a rock star. Life balances out. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, that's just how it goes. So... So I know not everybody has a rock star, but what I do tell people is that, you know, there are so many people that I've never even heard of who have 500,000 Twitter yeah. followers. It's like, who is this person? Yeah. And, and they're in, so if you can find somebody who isn't, you know, who's known for one thing, you know, a chef and you, you know, you watch some of his stuff and it's like, this guy's pretty funny. I wonder if he wants to do something more comedic, you know, and you can, you can reach out to these people. And if you find some, and we, I mean, beyond my cousin, you know, after the first season, a lot of other people in his world, other rock stars reached out and a combination of me, them reaching out to me and me reaching out to them. They saw how much fun Andy was having. And they're like, Oh, this is something I don't get to do normally. Right. You know, I would love to do this. And they did it for free. You know, they came in, we shot them all out in a day. And so if you can find people that have a social media following, but maybe want to show a different showcase a different side of themselves to their fans or yeah. you know they just think they're really funny whatever it is take that ego and use it for your own benefit and so you know it's it's not that hard to to reach out to these people and if you have a really good idea 
they'll get back to you. Yeah. You so, never know. I mean, that's also like uh, when you watch TV, like 30 Rock, for example, was like by the end of their series, they were like special guest stars every single mm-hmm. episode. Like Matt Damon came on for a stint to just show his comedy. It's exactly. like you just never know who's a fan. Exactly. And if you see, you know, if they see other people having fun, then it's like, oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, like, and, and, oh, you can shoot me out in a day. Great. You know, and then, I mean, I think the other thing is just to not, I mean, you know, a lot of, uh, a, a large number of, of Andy's following um, are younger. I mean, and so I never, I made the show for me, you know, we all made the show for us, you know, and our sensibilities and our humor. So I'm never pandering to 15 year olds or whatever. I mean, in season two, we, we just blatantly rip off Apoc- Apocalypse Now, The Godfather <laughs> 3, this season we rip off um jfk you know these movies that no one's asking for you know riffs on but to us it was really funny and so i think a lot of there's a lot of parody in the youtuber world and it's just the same stuff Mm. you know in different you know everyone's just doing the same challenge videos the same and so i think you know you you may not you may have a larger audience if you do that but i think you're going to have a more loyal audience if you're doing something specifically you yeah. and people get your sense of humor and there's nowhere else to see my show and i yeah. can see that i can say that confidently our sensibilities and everything else because we're all unique so i think a combination of of finding somebody who's got a little bit of of star power on the online world and then just doing what really what you find funny is the best way to you know to have some success but Absolutely. it's all a gamble i mean it's all you know Ah, oh, Joe, appreciate it, man. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> this is yeah, this is good. Hopefully, I wasn't too long winded. No, no, no. Uh, we're out of time for this segment, but um, again, May fifth. Mm-hmm. Um, YouTube channel is it's uh, youtube.com slash the Joe Flanders. The Joe Flanders, and uh, the trailer for season three is out now. Um, you know, anybody that's seen the show this season is totally batshit crazy we, yeah. we treated the season like a live action cartoon and that was <laughs> for our own sake because we didn't want to start repeating ourselves but also just for the audience's sake no, we are not repeating ourselves in any way in any of these episodes things are crazy <laughs> <laughs> awesome. you 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 might have already said it but if you can give a piece of advice for the person who's trying to start up their web series i mean what would be the best thing you could say to them um i think yeah i mean like a, yeah i i think before uh, you reach out to anybody or anything like mm. I was just talking about, I think you've just got to, you got to figure out what you want to say, you mm. know, what is it that is, what's important to you? And you can mask all that stuff in humor, but it makes your job a lot easier if you have some idea, some momentum of where is this going, you know, unless you just want to do s- sketch and then it's purely just whatever's funny. Yeah. But if you want to do some, a combination, I think it's just figuring out what's important to you. What do you want to say? And then masking it in as many dick jokes as possible. Uh, <laughs> if that's <laughs> if that's if you're, if that's the bet you're trying to take, that's a good combo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So hopefully that's uh, somewhat helpful. <laughs> um, and you're on Twitter. Right? Yeah, uh, the Joe Flanders on Twitter. Um, Flan dangerous on Instagram. Flan uh, dangerous. Dangerous. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's Patrick actually forced me to do that name. I thought it was stupid, and uh, now no. I've just owned it. I <laughs> am Flan Dangerous. Flan Dangerous. Um, and uh, I yeah, wish I had a cool name on Instagram. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> These are the regrets we have. You know, that's okay. You'll got to live it. with them. Yeah, exactly. So All May fifth. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll be right back, guys. I gotta say, I really love the sponsor today. It's Audible.com. What you can do with Audible.com with this. With this free 30-day trial, you get a free audiobook download. So what does that mean? You can go on there and choose from over 180,000 titles. Uh, My personal favorite, The Hobbit. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. You can be stuck on the 405 freeway listening to the wonderful narration of The Hobbit or The Lord of the Rings books. Or maybe something else. Maybe Divergent. Hmm? That's applicable to our industry right now. (laughs) No, but seriously, audibletrial.com slash Actors Anonymous podcast. Go there. You get a free 30-day trial of their service plus a free audiobook download of whatever you'd like. That's a lot to choose from, over 180,000 titles. That's like you can literally go years with this service and still not go through all the books. 
And it's a great way to spend time, especially for those Los Angeles actors who are stuck in traffic or our New York actors who are on the subway or walking. You know, you can have somebody whisper sweet narrations into your ear. Uh, I love it. It saves time and it lets me catch up on my reading. Again, it's www.audibletrial.com slash actors anonymous podcast. And we're back. I was making silly faces into the camera. I don't know if you saw Nicole. Nope. She did not. It was very, that's totally a very different. Nope. We were in mid episode. <laughs> yeah. You thought I just starting I thought, up yeah, I was like, like a that's, crazy that's person. That's not how we start this. <laughs> <laughs> well, our next guest, Evan Dollard from the NBC Spartan Ultimate Team Challenge, American Ninja Warrior, American Gladiator, Blood Relatives, who you co-starred with Nicole, correct? I did. Yes. I would call that probably the highlight of my career thus far. <laughs> I would too. Yeah. Working with Nicole is the best. It was right. the best. <laughs> and then everything else is just downhill after that. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Where do you go from there? Right. <laughs> Evan, uh, first question. Um, do you work out? <laughs> Not a day in my life. Not a day in yeah. my life. <laughs> so something cool that I was reading yesterday. I got to see some of your U- your YouTube channel, the one where you, I forgot the episode name, but there was like this crazy obstacle course it had like a castle. There were some yellow bars and you were trying to run it in a certain amount of time. You got like 29 seconds or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Basically years ago, I created a web series called Ninja Quickie and there's a free running gym in South Bay called Tempest Academy. Right. And so I hit up my, my Ninja Warrior friends and I said, Hey, do you want to come meet at this gym? We'll set up a little course. Yeah. And so you can get to know essentially the athletes of American Ninja Warrior while simultaneously showing my, um, interest in in hosting and transitioning from athlete to on-camera talent yeah so that was the intention of that web series and we shot 50 of them and i say we i mean wow. i like i got my camera guys um fed them in yeah <laughs> breakfasts brunches and cases of beer and basically i edited all in premiere and i hosted everything and produced all of it and yeah that's awesome yeah that's that's like such a huge undertaking so producing a show and then also working out and then a also little bit. <laughs> I mean, no, it's a, no, it's a huge <laughs> undertaking. The show became my workout, so I yeah. was able to combine the two, where I didn't have to work out separately than just just <laughs> racing my friends. Well, there's a there's an amazing. The, why I'm bringing that up is because as I was watching it, I I tend to stay active. I work out. I've done martial arts, and there's this constant resistance like even this morning i specifically signed up for this early morning yoga class it's like at 6 a.m or 6 30 a.m and i set my alarm I'm like i'm gonna do it i got plenty of sleep and then as soon as that alarm hit i was like you know what it's a month unlimited i can go again next week or like in a few days uh, you know what i'm kind of sore today anyway i'm gonna give my body and like a million excuses came into my head and I was just, and then I just like kind of like took a step back mentally because I was still in bed. <laughs> and I was just like, what am I doing? Get your ass out of bed and just go to the yoga class. It's the easiest one they have today. What are you doing? <laughs> so I did. I'm glad I went. But there's, there's an, uh, there's, uh, in The War of Art, it's this great book. It talks about homeostasis. And I just wanted to give the definition really quick. And homeostasis, the tendency of the body to seek and maintain a condition of balance or equilibrium within its internal environment, even when faced with external challenges. And this applies, I believe, even to if you are unhealthy, if you are, let's say you don't work out and you're wanting to start getting working out, you're you're disrupting that homeostasis that you've gotten used to. You know what I mean? Or you want to start a new diet. You're disrupting the homeostasis of your unhealthy diet. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's always going to be resistance and there's always going to be this huge obstacle to break through. How do you, how do you deal with that? Whew. I mean, to use that definition, I'm very, very grateful that I had a father who introduced me to athleticism very early on. He was the coach of my T-ball league. So four-year-old Evan, you know, just learning how to, to run around and, and be a little kid. Yeah. My, my dad was there at my side, you know, showing me how to swing a bat and being the coach of this team and really supporting me. And kind of that carried over. And he's like, now we're going to try basketball. Now we're going to try soccer. And it was always a part of who I was growing up, which I think for a lot of kids it is. But I was never one of those kids that 
loathed gym class. I really like going to <laughs> oh, gym yeah. class. I'm like, I get to put some shorts on now and a t-shirt. We get to run around. That sounds awesome to me. Yeah. <laughs> and I never under- understood the kids that were like, I hate gym. I'm like, why? <laughs> this is the best part of the day. Yeah. And I attribute that a lot to my dad because he introduced this habitual, I kind of consider it a habit or a, a lifestyle. It mm. was never something that I... Mm hated doing or loathed doing as i said it was something that i looked forward to and even as i got into high school and college it became i'll be honest a little bit more of an aesthetic thing than a performance thing so i didn't enjoy the movement as much as i just wanted to look good yeah i I wanted to have a certain external appearance because i saw the value in how that external appearance affected me socially affected me in career and it it provided other opportunities right so so i bet I'm sorry to interrupt. No, no, you. no go no. ahead. I was just going to say then you've had to encounter have you, I mean you've trained people in some of these if I'm not mistaken you've worked with maybe people who aren't as athletically, you know, naturally gifted as you or naturally habituated as you. So, how do you help them or how do you get them to like it? So, or to break through that obstacle at least. Maybe not even like it, just to break through that laziness, that resistance. You need to find the thing that drives you. <clears throat> I mean, everybody we talk to on this, it's motivation. Anyway, it's continue. Motivation. Sorry. It is. It's I the know. same universal truths that everybody's, every like, guest comes like in. Continue. Sorry, I just got excited. <laughs> yes. Jordan, this is working. I understand. I'm, I'm getting it. No, I totally understand. <laughs> <laughs> we just live in this room and I just yell at Jordan, basically. <laughs> Sorry, continue. No, it's, it's one of those... People are driven by different things, and you have to identify that thing that that drives you. And if you can, you need to find a way to apply it to the fitness side of things. And I don't even like, I'll be honest, I don't like the fitness industry at all. Mm. I'm not a proponent for traditional, how do I, I've never found a great way of saying it. So I'm just going yeah, to try to think uh, out loud and muscle my way through this Don't response. be PC. There's so much noise out there. So many people have opinions about diet and nutrition and here's the best workout for you. And the truth is there's a lot of different things that work. P90X works. If you commit to P90X, it will work because you're getting up, you're moving, you're burning calories. If you minimize your sugars, you minimize your carb- traditional carbohydrates, even just cutting them in half, it'll add value and you'll see a difference. But ultimately none of that matters if you're not doing it for yourself for a very specific reason. Mm-hmm. And for me, it's, I love walking around the planet feeling like a superhero. You know, when I go to Tempest Academy and I can do a dive calling and grab a bar and swing out of it, I feel really good about myself. And it's, there's that part of it. There's the aesthetic part of it. I like looking a certain way. And there's the social side of it where I have an elevated confidence going and talking to a woman, for example, if I look and feel this certain way. And for a, a father, maybe he wants to have more energy for his kid. Maybe he wants to have a better sex life with his wife. Whatever that thing is, or for women, they want to look better walking around in a bathing suit. I don't know what it is. Or they just want to feel empowerment. All I know is anytime that I'm physically active and I commit to taking care of my body, that that discipline, the endorphins, everything about that is is all metaphor for something else in my life. It lays the groundwork for how I want to feel and be as a human being in relationships and career and everything else. So I've never put a premium on fitness as fitness for fitness sakes. I put a premium on fitness because all of the principles that I've learned and the way that I feel when I'm active makes me a better human being all around. There's a couple things in there that I really like. First thing was what you said about there's basically no one path to ultimate fitness or ultimate physicality. I think we're all different. We all have different circumstances and different dietary needs and just genetics play into play and our motivations are different. Um, I love doing the same. I love trying out different types of workout stuff. Uh, I've done Insanity, P90X, and I've seen results in both those things. But And then I've done different types of yoga, martial arts, etc. And it's just so fun to start off as a quote-unquote white belt whenever you first start something off, even if you are physically fit, I still have trouble. Like, uh, there is a new type of yoga I started and I'm like, Oh gosh, I'm like really wobbly and I've never moved my body in that way. And it's exciting. Cause it's like, Oh, the possibilities now are endless on where I can go from here. 
Um, and it applies, that application I apply to acting. There's a lot of different techniques for acting, a lot of different types of styles. And I don't like it either when a teacher or casting director says, don't come in here and do this. You have to do this. It's like, well, not, not, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can get to that truth, to that end result I want in a different way. Um, but yeah, I, I, I really enjoy that. And you were really lucky, I guess, to, um, is my phone okay? <laughs> no, I have nothing. Uh, okay. Wow. Um, uh, yeah, I think you were really lucky, like you said, to have a, a father to kind of just in ingrain that in you in, in such a young age. Yeah. Ah, oh, love it. Yeah. <laughs> I love what you were mentioning about how there's so much of a residual effect of simply just working out for an hour and then... You're right. You do feel better walking into a room. You feel better going up and talking to someone. You feel better presenting yourself to the world. And it's such a, there's such a level of mental health with your physical exterior. And I feel like we don't, there's not a lot of talk about that. There's a lot of talk about diet. There's a lot of talk about exercise, but there's not a lot about the reason why we all do this is like at the end of the day, you're, you're mentally healthier when you feel and look better about yourself absolutely because yeah. there is that connection b totally. uh, between your body mind and being mm -hmm. and uh, it's a part of you whether you like it or not your body is it's 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 you it's part of you yeah it's not the only thing that defines you but it's part of you it's an extension of your mind an extension of your your soul your being yeah, yeah. Deep yeah. stuff here on so uh, the deep. podcast. So wow. uh, this is what we do here. See what happens when the show's not good. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, I got to ask you because, and this is just a, a, a purely selfish question. Uh, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to do, I can do a pull up. Sure. I can do the pull ups thing fine i'm trying to do that thing where they you, you get back up mm. and is that you got a swing i'm assuming right which i'm on a muscle up that's what it's called correct yeah, oh, yeah so yeah. You're, you're pull up and then you just continue and yeah, you just yeah muscle, that's yeah. a muscle up how do you how do you do it properly Ooh, because i have you here <laughs> and i'm gonna use this time selfishly to, to to figure this out do you swing you have to swing up right there there's a couple different techniques okay so depending on who you talk to they'll give you a different answer Okay. Um, um, I want the Evan Dollar answer. You want the Evan Dollar answer? <laughs> <laughs> that's, the Evan Dollar answer is it don't be a bitch and just do it. <laughs> like, I feel like that's what you want to say to me right now. <laughs> you know what? No, no, not at all. Just Although, do it. Okay. <laughs> Fair. I do have friends that I, if I ever work out with somebody and yeah. I'm not doing, not performing at the level that I should, I will tell them to, to push me that way. Oh, okay. It's amazing. I will literally say, just tell me, Evan, don't be a bitch. <laughs> I love that. And they do. And I'm like, you know what? Like, as it, it does, it actually angers me at the center of my chest. Yeah, yeah. Kind of gets that adrenaline going, so that extra push that I need. Uh, but that's not what I'm going to tell you. Okay, that's fine. There's, you can kip a little bit is what it's called, where essentially you're, it's a movement, almost, it, it, there's a gymnastics movement. It's a gymnastics movement that you learn when you're early on in your, your gymnastics yeah. career, where um, I'm not sure that I could articulate it properly without showing you and like gyrating oh, gotcha. in my chair and make it very uncomfortable for everybody here. <laughs> Do it. But there's <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're live on you. Know, we're live right now, so it's fine yeah. with me. No, so you have to I mean, like you have to like go. There's you can pull and then you're essentially activating your core and using the momentum of your knees thrusting up mm. to then getting your chest above the bar and pressing. Oh, okay. No. Yeah. Not like I said, oh, okay. Like, not, I got it. Oh, you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah that's no, what no, I've been doing. Okay, shut up, shut now, up, shut up, Evan. I got it. I got it. <laughs> yeah. Glad we cleared that up. <laughs> <laughs> but there are a lot of bar calisthenics. Bar calisthenics is this whole new uh, subculture within fitness. And these guys where they'll, it's almost like a, a street version of the high bar where they're going to cast and do a 360 and re grab mm -hmm. and they're going to muscle up and put their foot on the bar and, you know, do all these different kind of fun, interactive, freestyle techniques on the bar and muscling up is one of them but these guys are so strong because they've been doing it for a long long time that they'll strict muscle up they won't kip at all they won't use their momentum or their knees they'll just straight up pull oh that's what i want and then know. just they're activated it's it's a transition from various muscle groups essentially but Ooh. your tendon strength has to be developed as well right tendon strength uh, that's probably true 
I haven't, I haven't. I'm not trying to sound like like a like like a smarty pants at all. I felt like I came off like that, but like you, you, you like, <laughs> and you I know. came across as not knowing the human body. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're both hurting. Best we're both hurting a little ever. bit right now. We're giving off the you best. Know. No, but no, seriously, like because I've I've like torn ligaments and tendons in my knees before, and that oh. that's taken a while to heal up, like a full year. You know what I mean? So. I don't know if yeah I guess you don't I'll, I'll figure it, I'll figure it out I'll Google it. <laughs> <laughs> I I think my biggest concern is a muscle with a strict muscle would probably be your shoulders because that's where I feel it the most. But that could be my my weakness. But like in your sh- in, like in shoulders. Right? Yeah, because basically you're going from from kind of a bicep and and lateral pull into getting your chest above the bar, and then it's becoming a press where it's yeah. more tr- against tricep and it's like your lower pectorals kind of pressing up. Ah, uh, okay. But in that transition, you're putting a lot of strain. On the gotcha. deltoids is what I imagine. I'm trying to make up for not. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I'm just I'm naming muscle groups now because I the, feel pressure to know more about the lateralis. Oh, and the, the, it's yeah, all about your lats. The const- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the constantal pulse and the, exactly. the fractals. <laughs> I said fractals. No, I, we have listeners going right out there. They are high. Right? Yeah. Fractals? Uh, you, that's you've got not them. a muscle group. You've got them. Believe me. You know what? I, don't, I just can't understand every time I watch American Ninja Warrior. Maybe you can clear this up for me. How you do the bar lifts and then shoot the bar up like another like Oh, dude. Up he just this that. core strength, man. Uh, it's just all, it's it's all just, about your core. <laughs> it's all about your core. Well, that's... I mean, that's why if you ask me about a muscle up, I'll, I'll immediately think of my training for the salmon ladder. Because that's just kipping, and I never fully extend. If you watch me do pull-ups at the gym, I'll look... <laughs> I kind of look like an asshole. Now, now I look... can our followers watch that? No, yeah. <laughs> I, example, I live stream all of my workouts. Um, so, I'll give you the link at the end of the show. <laughs> but I, oh, I... There's certain taboos at the gym you know and you watch all these gym fail videos or these people who are like spying on yeah. other guys that are working out in the gym because they're doing something improperly that's me when i do pull-ups because <laughs> i only extend like three quarters of the way yeah and then i drive my knees with every single pull now i've gotten away from this a little bit because i found that there was some weakness in my full range of motion strength which i changed but basically when you're on a salmon ladder it doesn't matter form doesn't matter with regard to a strict pull-up. Like a strict pull-up, you want to fully extend and then pull up and then fully extend again. And you get that whole range of motion on your, you know, all the, the muscles that you're activating to do a pull-up. Right. The salmon ladder, you just want to get that bar up 12 inches to the next rung. And you don't need to be fully extended. In fact, if you fully extend, you're kicking yourself in the foot or shooting yourself in the foot, rather. Right. Because now you're needing more strength in order to do that. But if you drive your knees, activate the core, and pow, just kind of pop up there like that... It's more efficient for that exercise. I've I've got to apologize. We we asked you questions like are that are not <laughs> proper for a <our> podcast. Like <laughs> like the <laughs> most visual. visual like you visuals. actually have to yeah. stand up and show us, and we're asking yeah. you to like verbally describe them. No, but um, thank you for for uh, explaining. <laughs> <laughs> this is not as, oh, this is, this is probably gonna be how uh, I was curious. Uh, um, I forgot what it was. We, I can jump in. <laughs> yeah. we, Please. Okay, here we go. Uh, <laughs> so you, so you worked with the American Ninja family for a long time, and now you, you were mentioning before you're doing like an on-camera work for them as well. You're hosting, Correct. yes. So what is that about? So it's I'm co-hosting. I'm a field reporter on the new Spartan Ultimate Team Challenge show. Mm. And essentially, it's the same production company as American Ninja Warrior, A. Smith. And yeah, I've been working, I've done five seasons now of American Ninja Warrior, working with those, wow. uh, with crazy. a phenomenal team. Like, I love A. Smith. Everything that A. Smith does is just, it, it's phenomenal to me. They're really yeah. polished as a production company. And they've built American Ninja Warrior into what it was, where, or into what it is. So I started season two, and there was just a handful of, there's maybe 300 of us that competed in Venice Beach, and now it's multiple cities. The finals are set up completely in Las Vegas. It went from G4 to NBC, and I think 50,000 people applied this year to be considered oh for season gosh. eight. Jeez. Wow. The show is blown wow. up because they've done a great job of, of not making it simply a show, but making it uh, a sport. Mm-hmm. You know, ninja gyms are popping up everywhere, and there's this desire for people that watch the show to to want to get up off the couch and do it they want to set up courses in their basement or their backyard 
And oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, so I love A Smith, and I think I'm just supremely impressed with everything they've done with that show. And I've always wanted to transition from being an athlete to being on camera talent. So when I found out that they were going to be doing a Spartan race show, I thought, yes, this could be the opportunity for me to do just that. Because Spartan Obstacle Course Racing, the acronym for that is OCR. So if I use that moving forward, now you know what I'm yeah, talking about. OCR. OCR is very, very popular and in and of itself a growing sport. And it's for these weekend warrior types that want to sign up for something. They want to challenge themselves. They want to do something new. And A. Smith took that sport and turned it into a team competition. So it's it's me three teams of, of five people running through a, cor- a mile long course doing different obstacles, but every obstacle is designed to be done together as a team. Mm. And it all culminates in this massive 18 foot wall called the slip wall where people have to like literally create a human ladder with your team in order to get to the top because you're all muddy and wet and oh you God. can't ascend it without relying on your other team members. And it's so insane. <laughs> So inspiring, yes. Are they are they <clears throat> different skill levels, or is it everybody's like pretty awesome? It's I mean, there's some American Ninja Warriors that are actually competing um, on teams, and then there's a team of farmers, for example, that are a, whole, a farm family that are like, I wanted this new challenge, and they're obviously very capable because their life is being active, you know, hugging bales of hay and like everything else, and but everyone has this base level of fitness, and they but they're each not. Other? The team members know each other? Most of them, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the team of farmers, they're actually an actual family. Mm-hmm. And there's one group of, like, Spartan singles that meant that met on an active lifestyle, like, dating site oh, for awesome. Spartans. <laughs> yeah. They all know each other and train together <laughs> and collectively have r- run, okay. like, almost 100, I think, Spartan races. It's wild. But everyone has a, a base foundation of fitness. But it truly is how well do you work together as a team? Because even if you have a ninja warrior on your team, when you get to the slip wall, that ninja can't mm-hmm. run up the wall without you. He needs to be able to assist right. everyone in getting to getting through this obstacle. And that's how it is for every step of this mile-long course. So my role is essentially, um, they threw me into the mix. They wanted somebody on the ground who could hear the athletes and, and be present with them. So not just in the crow's nest, but when they're tackling the slip wall, what am I hearing? Oh. What am I seeing? Oh, yeah, 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 Talking yeah. about their strategy as it's happening. It's awesome. From an athletic perspective. <laughs> Sorry. So if they're like messing up, you're like literally right next to them talking to the camera, <laughs> like going, their ankles not pivoted correctly, <laughs> yeah. Jim. They're, d- they're going to they're gonna snap something pretty <laughs> yeah. soon. <clears throat> That's see, basically what's happening. I want to see, and now like, I wanna see. The, while they're doing it, you're like, how are you feeling right now? <laughs> 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 like, talk, talk I'm so me. sorry to interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny because a lot of these athletes, uh, having been on American Ninja Warrior and run a number of Spartan races, I know a lot of the athletes that competed on the show. So I'm sh- literally shouting commentary about their performance <laughs> eight feet from their face. That's amazing. And it's I love they that. can hear. Oh, yeah. yeah. And occasionally. You can totally I'll, mess them up. Completely. Oh, 100%. Because <laughs> occasionally I'll get one of these. <laughs> where I'm not trying to distract them from what they're doing, but like I get it, I miss the spear throw again. You don't need to shout it <laughs> in my ear. Stacy keeps and messing up that <laughs> spear throw. Uh, she's uh, she's fucking up pretty bad today. Yeah. <laughs> but Stacey's anytime, like, Stop! anytime an athlete would just turn and make eye contact oh with God. me, made my life. It was so much fun. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that, I'm here. That, that this is happening. Me, that reminds me of the um, you, you watch Fear Factor, right? I have, yeah. Oh my gosh, that that's if that show comes back on the air, I would love to host that show, like straight up, because it remi- it's it's similar to the fact of like somebody has their face and like pig's blood trying to get like oh. pig's ears out, and mm. you're screaming at them, yelling, "You can do this! <laughs> you got it!" <laughs> I'm like, it's, it's ridiculous. Um, we're running out of time. Um, before we go, for you might again you might have already said it but for actors i think it's really important that they are um, in tune with their body to a certain extent uh, at least because you know you have to be in control of it you have to be able to utilize it etc for somebody who is not into fitness at all and they want to get into it what's a good starting place like in terms of should they do yoga should they do one of these uh, ocr gyms or what would you recommend Ooh, just getting started. Yeah, that's, just getting started. That's a that's a tough one because I I wouldn't want them to to give up, you <laughs> oh, know. Yeah. And that's the we started talking about initially. It's where do you, what's that drive? Where is that coming from? Mm. And what is your your motivation for it? 
Um, I'm a huge proponent for anything that's just body weight specific or, or where you're just doing body weight exercises. Like P90X is a good example because yeah. it's, it's a discipline and it's a commitment. Like you make a commitment to these 90 days and you can follow through on it. You can do it at home. It's easy access. I'm not represented by Beachbody or P90X or Tony Horton or yeah. anything. Like I just, I've seen people that have done it and they, they get the results that they want and that they need because it's just, it's easy access. They can do it at home. They're not feeling the pressure of going to a gym. Yeah. So I would say anything like that where you make a commitment to it, whether it's 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, focuses predominantly on circuit training. So you're not just running, you're transitioning from, you know, push-ups to goblet squats yeah, to I air squats or, you know, triceps where you're hitting your whole body. It's just a whole body workout. And when you're doing that type of workout, circuit training and focusing on muscle groups and resistance training, even if it's the resistance of your own body weight, that elevates your metabolism more than going for a run. So typically you go for a run, you burn those calories, but your metabolism isn't going to be elevated for any certain amount of time. Yeah. Weight training actually does that, resistance training, again, even if it's your own body weight, which is why I'm a huge proponent for circuit training. Yeah. But I would say find a program that interests you. And if ideally it's something that you can do at home, if you're opposed to going to the gym or some private place where you can do it, where it's easy access. So you're removing any of those points of resistance yeah. that are going to inhibit you from following through on that commitment. Absolutely. Totally agree. YouTube, I think uh, to add on to that, Oh yeah, there's a bunch of stuff on YouTube, nice, easy beginning workouts. Uh, but I do like the idea of circuit training because uh, I get bored if it's just running on a treadmill as well. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> people hate running. A lot of people do. I, you know what changed running for me? Uh, running up like, uh, like the hiking trail. Oh, there you go. Because it's super difficult and it's constantly changing, especially like in the morning. It's like you could go from like very dim light to like the sunrise and like, you know, there's a mist sometimes, you know, it, it's just, it's changing as you're going along. So it keeps it more interesting. See, and I think it's even listening to you describe that, you've got to find that thing that you really like. I actually, <laughs> my workouts are the same every week. I do the same thing every single week. Mm. And I, I get on a treadmill and I'll do 400 meter intervals. I don't even do long distance runs anymore. Yeah. And do, I do things that people would absolutely loathe. But I, for me, I know the reason why I'm doing it. And I know that if I maintain this certain level of fitness, that that's, that's what drives me. So I don't need the, the visuals around me because I'm just focused on gritting, <laughs> gritting down and, and getting it done. But if you respond to being out in nature, go do that. Yeah. Do whatever you think is going to, be the, position you again best for success absolutely evan thank you so much for coming on the show man yeah of course uh and your twitter handle evan dollard i believe at evan dollard yeah instagram's the same youtube's the same and if All people want to check out uh what's what show you have on esquire if i'm not mistaken so i was on team ninja warrior right um on esquire network it was their american ninja warrior spinoff it was a lot of fun mm -hmm. probably the right. most fun i've had ever on an american ninja warrior course because you're actually right. racing somebody side by side uh -huh. Um, so that's on Esquire Network. NBC's Spartan Ultimate Team Challenge will be this summer premiering on June 13th, right after American Ninja Warriors. So Great. that'll be fun. So stick around after watching all these athletes <laughs> for more athleticism. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Why not? Binge on a marathon. <laughs> um, thanks again for coming on the show. Yeah, of really course. Appreciate having me. Of course. Uh, Cheryl. What's up? Thanks hey, for joining. Sam. Appreciate it. Thanks, man. I Thanks like, for having me. I like the hat. Is that, Do uh, you? Uh, is that Bacardi? It is. <laughs> <laughs> and we're talking about fitness and I'm promoting liquor. <laughs> it's okay. A little <laughs> liquor every now and then. Yeah. Jordan, yes. you have a podcast. I do. A new podcast it's, coming up. Yeah. Describe it. A uh, new podcast. It's called Highly Overrated. It's uh, myself and the wonderful Raina Scully. Raina Scully. Uh, she is amazing. Uh, we will be, uh, we live stream like we do here. Uh, we do, uh, it's called Highly Overrated. And uh, it launched on 420. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly what you might think it is. It's actually just me. <laughs> it's, I'm, I'm going to be honest. It's me and Raina chilling out and uh, having some fun people on our show. And uh, It's not you know, a nature trying, show? Trying out a few, a few oh. different types of uh, greenery. Oh, it's a garden are. show. Yeah, it's a garden yeah, show. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. what we got for it. Oh. Yeah. Lots of garden <laughs> shows. So if for, for you culture. are on iTunes, check it out and let us know what you think. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> uh, big thanks to Nikki. Nikki, thanks for uh, what you do and what you do. I don't know why I'm talking like that. Uh, big thanks to GBB <laughs> Studios, Gabe. Uh, really appreciate it. Thanks to all of our listeners. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, you can find me at We Sam Kish, our podcast at 
Podcast AA and our website, actressanonymouspodcast.com. <clears throat> and always remember to listen, think, and then talk. Again, big thanks to our sponsor, Audible. Check them out. What you can do is go to www.audibletrial.com slash podcast and get your free 30-day trial plus a free audiobook download with over 180,000 titles to choose from. This is one of my favorite sponsors we've had on the show. Amazing service. Again, www.audibletrial.com, my friend, slash Actors Anonymous Podcast. And you get that free audiobook and a free 30-day trial.